I don't think anybody ever starts out to be a collector. It just sort of is an evolutionary process. It happens. When I look at a painting, I look for the depth, something that pulls me into the piece. The fun part about collecting uh, also is the hunt and the chase. Uh, once you kind of developed a, an interest in a certain area or style or theme or artist, you can start looking for them. I have one painting that is my very most favorite painting in the whole house. It's one of the least valuable paintings that we have. But whenever I see it, it makes me smile. And that's why I like it. The Robert Henry that you're going to photo is typical of his paintings of children. Um, we call them street urchins, and he did dozens of these paintings, and they are probably the most coveted paintings that Henry did. Um, there's been a slow migration of the best ones into museums, uh, and they've become very expensive today because there's so few left on the market. Sunday Morning is done by Mary Bradish Titcomb, a Boston School painter. She frequently signed her paintings M.B. Titcomb because at the time she was painting, people wouldn't buy paintings by females. It's called Sunday Morning because the ladies are lined up in a row walking to church. The colors in it are beautiful. The Glackens, we have two Glackens. The Glackens that you're going to photograph is a still life. Uh, he is known for these still life paintings, floral scenes. He went to high school with Albert Barnes of the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. And Barnes sent him abroad to purchase paintings for him. He had a very dark palette, Glackens did, until he was exposed to some of the European painters, and particularly Renoir and he picked up that orange and red palette that Renoir used. Well, it's a, it's a street scene in uh, Rockport, Maine. Uh, it's entitled The Blue Gate. And the thing that I really like about the piece is it has a lot of impasse to, uh, a lot of paint on the canvas, a lot of colors, great shadows, um, and not only do you have the street scene, but you also have the uh, harbor scene in the background. The Guy Wiggins is one of my favorites, and it's called Cabbies at the Plaza. I love New York City, and it's uh, the handsome cabs with the horses. And there, it's not a big piece, but there are 10 people in it, two horses and a dog, and two, two of the cabbies. And I particularly like the use of the color red in it. When you look at this piece, you'll see it around the wheels in the cab, and one of the ladies has on a red dress, and there's just red all through it. It's a social realist urban landscape scene from about 1910, roughly. I don't remember the exact date. It's kids in New York City having a snowball fight on a mound of dirty snow. It's classic ash can art, and though I have several pieces by members of the eight, the, the originators of the ash can movement. Uh, that's probably the only true ash can type painting that I have. Frederick Friesico is an American expat. He went to France and studied with the French Impressionist and stayed over there for the most part. I think the, the bulk of his body of work was produced in France. His Two main subject matters were women in gardens with the sun, dappled sunlight through the flowers in, in them, uh, doing things like reading or sunbathing kind of stuff. And uh, his second body was these interior boudoir toilette type scenes of women in their dressing rooms getting dressed. And, uh, but it's a, it's a nice piece by a very well respected artist. And you know, people build collections, they want to have museum quality pieces. And, that's one that I feel pretty certain that uh, most museums would probably hang on the wall if I gave it to them. You know, one of the interesting things about the show is that it does start off with American Impressionism in the 1870s or so. Um, and that's, that's really that, that period, 1870s up until the early 20th century is, is the core of the show. But, um, just based on what some of the collectors have, it, we, you know, we have works that go all the way up in the 1960s and 70s, and so you really get um, you know, pretty 
representative sampling of uh, almost 100 years of American art in this exhibition. I basically print out the images of, of each artist's work that I, that I took when I was visiting and put them up on the wall in my office. And um, in that way, they're just taped to the wall and I can move things around and make new combinations and see kind of, oh, does this section only have five objects and this one has 50? That's not really a great balance. How can we rework that and, and restructure things? Um, and so from, from there, uh, I had Joanne send me a, some scale drawings of the galleries, and then we see how things kind of fit within the flow of, of the galleries and where we need to do things like add in some temporary walls, um, how each section kind of fits as you experience it in the gallery. So it, it's a, a very kind of a organic process. And the experience of seeing something in a domestic setting um, versus seeing it kind of up on a museum wall and, and lit differently and in combination with different works of art, I, um, I think it's... For them it will be really exciting and I, I think it will be amazing for people from this community to come and um, see works that, that are being collected by people in the region. We've made a lot of good friends. It's broadened my horizon, my view of the world. I, I can say this, that nothing has ever enhanced our lives more than collecting.